With the Book of Many Things delayed a bit, I got to exploring my review copy a bit deeper. Game Master is here, and in the Book of Many Things, it plays heavily on the deck of many things, but also with various other types of decks and how cards can be used in your general Dungeons & Dragons game. Keep in mind that while the Book of Many Things does revolve around the deck of many things and its cards, but it, it, it also details out other types of decks and cards as well. And of course, you can use a regular poker deck should you want, uh, as there are references to suits, uh, uh, the, the diamonds, hearts, spades, and clubs. In Chapter 6, we get the Deck of Dimensions. It's a deck that you can use to teleport or open an arcane gate with. There is also the Deck of Miscellany. It's got 32 cards in it, each one with an image on it of a different item. For example, there is a depiction of a 10 foot or 10 feet iron worth of iron chain. Another has a healer's kit on it. Another has three daggers. And when you toss one to the ground, it will become the tangible item that was depicted on that specific card. There is also the deck of wild cards, which you can use to fling a card at a target and it will cause 1d4 slashing damage, but also imposes a magical effect based on the suit. It could be fire damage, lightning damage, cold damage, or a concussive blast that is inflicted upon the target. Of course, in Chapter 7, we have the Deck of Many More Things, which we covered in a past video. But we also have the Deck of Wonder, which is perfect if you want to use a poker deck for it. Uh, it. It can have variable sizes. Sometimes it will appear as a deck of just 13 cards. Other times it will appear as a deck of 22 cards. It works in a similar fashion to the Deck of Many Things, in which you must cite how many cards you want to draw uh, before you actually draw them. And once a card is drawn, the magic effect takes place immediately. You might find that you get a plus one bonus to a saving throw, or that you find a small amount of treasure appear at your feet, or you might find an uncommon magic weapon appear in your hands. Of course, there are some detrimental things that can happen too. If you'd like for me to cover with this deck in detail, let me know down in the comments. But there are also other options for using cards and card-based mechanics for your character, like the Cardomancer found in uh, Chapter 7, in which they can use a deck of cards for a spellcasting focus. And while we've covered this Cardomancer in a past video as well, I got to thinking, we've seen a card-slinging character before. There was sort of a crossover between Dungeons & Dragons and the online game Legends of Runeterra, in which we were given three subclasses, one for Barbarians, one for Fighters, and one for Rogue. It is the Rogue one that I want to chat about for a moment. It was called the Wild Card. The crossover was called Dark Tides of Buildwatcher, Buildwatcher, Bilge says it right there, Bilgewater, uh, Legends of Runatara. But do keep in mind that it was, uh, and I suppose still is, considered to be unofficial content, uh, partnered content. And it came out back in around 2020. But shortly after the promotion ended, it was removed from D&D Beyond. But it's probably still out there on the web somewhere. The Wild Card was a subclass for rogues and allowed them to use various things such as loaded dice, chess pieces, and playing cards. And it is the playing cards that I want to explore here as I think it would fit perfectly with the Book of Many Things and its card themes. This reads, the playing cards. Uh, you have developed a fighting style based around the cardomancy of the Serpent Isles. So you see, cardomancy isn't something new to the Book of Many Things. You have your own deck of enchanted cards and can make their edges razor with uh, or razor sharp with a flick of your wrist. If you have not yet used your sneak attack this turn, you can use your action to take one of the cards and attack a creature within 30 feet. You use your dexterity modifier and on a hit it deals slashing damage equal to 1d4 plus your dex modifier. When you roll for damage, look at the number rolled on the d4. The attack gains a random effect based on the number rolled as detailed in the wild card suit table. Looking at the wild card suit table, a roll of a 1 grants you blade. You'll roll your sneak attack damage and add it to your razor card's damage. A roll of 2 gives you shackle. The target speed is halved. A roll of a three gives you a heart. Roll your sneak attack damage and add it to your razor card's damage, but you immediately also regain a number of hit points equal to half the damage dealt. And a roll of a four gives you wild ace. You can choose which of the three previous results you'd prefer. Now, there's a bit more to the wild card subclass, but it pertains to the dice and, and chess pieces and its overall working. But I just thought that it would be neat 
to use as an addition to uh, make use of with the book of many things. Uh, kind of a themed campaign if you wanted to do that. This is all to say that as I dug deeper to the card-based mechanics and, and, and the different types of decks found within the book of many things, well, I, I think it's kind of a neat concept to add to the table, regardless if it's a player using the cards and decks or, or even myself as the DL. Now, real quick, I do need to thank my wonderful supporters of this channel. Their contributions have added so much to it and I cannot thank them enough. If you'd like to take a look and see how you too could become a YouTube or Patreon member, I'll leave a link down in the description. Let me know if you'd like for me to cover that deck of wonder, and if you'd like to see more about the Cardomancer and what all it can do, be sure to watch this video next. What fun and unique ways can you think of to incorporate cards into your table's role-playing game? Let me know down in the comments, and until next our paths cross, may jokers be wild.